evaluate the double integral over the surface s of x minus y ds, where s is the portion of the plane 3x plus 2y plus z equals 12 in the first octant. So the first thing that we're noticing here is how our plane is defined or our surface is being defined. We want to make a note that this is an explicitly defined surface. And to really make that even more clear, let's just rewrite this in terms of x and y. So we have 3x plus 2y plus z is equal to 12. And then solving for z, we now have a function in terms of just x and y defined as 12 minus 3x minus 2y. So this is our explicitly defined surface here. And so at this point, we want to recall how do we define surface integrals of explicitly defined surfaces. So we have this double integral over our surface s of a function of x, y, z. And again, we're integrating with respect to this surface s. And we convert this to a double integral over our region r. And we redefine the function as f of x, y, g of x, y. And here we're multiplying by the magnitude of the normal vector, the square root of the partial derivative of z with respect to x squared, plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y squared, plus 1 dA. So this is the formula that we're going to be using here. And so we have everything that we need with the exception of the domain of our surface. So to find the domain of our surface, let's go ahead and sketch the surface. So we want to sketch S in R3, and then we'll consider its projection into the two dimensions. So we're given two bits of information here. We have the plane 3x plus 2y plus z is equal to 12. And so to make this easier to sketch, let's think about the intercepts. So our z-intercept here, if we go ahead and let x and y be 0, we're just left with z is equal to 12. If we go ahead and find our x-intercept, we let y be 0 and z be 0, so we have 3x is equal to 12. And then solving for x here, we are left with x is equal to 4 as our intercept. And then last but not least, we have the y-intercept. Again, letting x be 0, letting z be 0, we have 2y is equal to 12. Solving for y, we see that we have a y-intercept at 6. So we'll go ahead and we'll plot these three intercepts on our graph. Again, this plane or this surface here is restricted to the first octant. So both X, or all x, y, and z are all positive. And we'll say there's where x is 4. We'll say right about here is where y is equal to 6. And then up here is where z is 12. And connecting these three intercepts, we see our surface s in the first octant. So in order to find the domain of s, we want to think about this surface's projection into the xy plane. So these are where the x and y bounds will come from. So I'm going ahead and thinking about this projection in two dimensions. We know we have our Cartesian coordinate system, x and y. We have this triangular region here. So we can see the bounds on x are from 0 to 4, but we don't know what our diagonal line is here, the upper bound on y. So to find the upper bound for y, we'll go ahead and let z be equal to 0. So in letting z be 0, our plane becomes 3x plus 2y is equal to 12. And now we can solve for y. So 
we have 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 12. And then dividing both sides by 2, we'll have y is equal to a negative 3 halves x plus 12 divided by 2 leaves us with 6. So this diagonal line, this upper bound on y, is the linear equation minus 3 halves x plus 6. And so we can go ahead now and explicitly define our surface. So we can say, therefore, our surface S can be defined as the vector valued function in terms of x and y. That's just x, y. Again, we're replacing z with g of x, y. So this is going to be x, y, 12 minus 3x minus 2y for the domain or our region r, which is defined as the set of all ordered pairs x, y, where y is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to negative 3 halves x plus 6, and x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to and we are ready at this point to now set up that surface integral. So keeping that equation in mind, at this point usually we want to go ahead and redefine the function f. Again, keeping in mind we want to rewrite it in terms of just x and y. So looking at our given function here, the integrand f of x, y, z is defined as x minus y. So since there's no z in this, this is perfectly acceptable, and we will use this equation or continue to use this equation. No parameterizing or redefining needed. So the next thing that we need to do is compute the magnitude of our normal vector, which again is the square root of the partial derivative of z with respect to x squared, plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y squared, plus 1. And to do this, we're going to use our explicit description here. z is equal to 12 minus 3x minus 2y. So the partial derivative of z with respect to x is going to be negative 3. The partial derivative of z with respect to y is minus 2. We know that the normal vector is defined by the components minus the partial derivative of z with respect to x, minus the partial derivative of z with respect to y1. So plugging these coordinates in that we just found, we are left with a positive 3, positive 2, 1. Oh, how cute. So we have a normal vector of 3, 2, 1, and we're ready to take the magnitude. So you can say that the magnitude of n, or the square root of the partial derivative of z with respect to x squared, plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y squared plus 1, is equal to the square root of 3 squared is 9, plus 2 squared is 4, plus 1. So we have the square root of 14. So we have all the pieces that we need now, and we're ready to set up our surface integral. We're going to use our bounds here on the domain of our surface, our region R. We're going to use our redefined function. And then we're also going to use the magnitude of our normal vector. So here we go. So we want to set up and evaluate the surface integral. We have the surface integral over s of our function f of x, y, z, ds, is now written as the integral from 0 to 4, the integral from 0 to minus 3 halves x plus 6 of x minus y multiplied by the square root of 14 dy dx. Let's go right ahead into integrating here. I'm going to factor out the square root of 14 
and we'll leave the outer integral with respect to x alone for now. So integrating with respect to y, we're going to have x times y minus y squared divided by 2 from 0 to minus 3 halves x plus 6 dx. So of plugging our bounds in here, we have the square root of 14 multiplied by the integral from 0 to 4 of, so we'll have x multiplied by a minus 3 halves x plus 6 minus 1 half multiplied by a minus 3 halves x plus 6 squared. And then fortunately when we plug 0 in, everything disappears dx. So, going ahead, we'll distribute this x through to both terms. We're also going to need to expand this binomial product out. So you want to think of that as minus 3 halves x plus 6 multiplied by minus 3 halves x plus 6. And foil that bad boy out. So this becomes the square root of 14 multiplied by the integral from 0 to 4 of minus 3 halves x squared plus 6x. I'm going to keep that negative 1 half still on the outside here. And then foiling our binomial product, we're going to have 9 fourths x squared minus 18x plus 36 dx. And we're almost there. We just need to go ahead now and distribute this negative one half through, and then we'll be able to combine up our like terms. So this gives us, giving ourselves a little bit more room, we have the square root of 14 multiplied by the integral from 0 to 4 of negative 3 halves x squared plus 6x minus 9 eighths x squared plus 18x, oh, not 18x, but plus 9x, and then minus 18. And last but not least, we'll combine up our like terms here, and we're ready to integrate again. We'll multiply the top or the numerator and denominator here by 4 to get that common denominator. Combining up those like terms, we have the square root of 14 times the integral from 0 to 4, and this is going to become minus 21 eighths x squared plus 15x minus 18 dx. And so now we're ready to integrate with respect to x. So we have the square root of 14 multiplied by minus 21 eighths multiplied by x cubed over 3 plus 15 multiplied by x squared over 2 minus 18x. And we are evaluating from 0 to 4. So we have a little bit of simplification. We know that 3 goes into 21 7 times. So we have the square root of 14 multiplied by, so we're substituting 4 in here, we have negative 7 eighths multiplied by 4 cubed, which gives us 64, plus 15 halves multiplied by 4 squared is 16, minus 18 multiplied by 4, and then again, fortunately, when we substitute 0 in, everything disappears. So we can simplify again. We know that 8 goes into 64 8 times, and that 2 goes into 16 8 times. And this is leaving us with the square root of 14 multiplied by minus 56 plus 15 times 8, which gives us 120, minus 18 times 4, which is minus 72, and so let's think we could combine our two negative terms here. So I have the square root of 14 multiplied by negative 128 plus 120, which leaves us with a beautiful final answer of negative 8 
times the square root of 14. And this is our final answer.